Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we've got something mm, unusual, I think is the best way to describe it. Uh, we're going to be looking at a DMR and more specifically a Russian DMR. Remember guys, if you like the content, then give us a thumbs up, remember to subscribe and hit the little bell for a notification and leave any comments in the comments section below. So let's get this box open. Remember this is an unboxing, not a review. So we're going to get this box open. We're going to do an unboxing and a first impressions of the APS SVU, otherwise known as the Dragunov SVU. So here we are again guys, another unboxing. So we have got the SVU ASP1012 ballpup sniper rifle, otherwise known as the SVU from a company called Dragunov for the real steel world. Now this to me, it's under the, the brand name of ASP and Sol. I personally think this is a Sima. It looks very much like a Sima to me, so why not? And other than this sticker on the front, there's nothing else to say anything about it. So it says there's a folding front and rear sights, folding bipod, scope mount, uh, special muzzle brake, full metal receiver, nylon rear force polymer handguard, and it tells you it's got semi automatic safety and whatnot. So let's open this up and see what's inside. If isn't for, this isn't built by Simon, then I don't know, I'll eat my own hoodie. So we've got some basic safety information. Uh, that is all in Polish, I think. So that'll be from the people who sent it to me or bought it from, I should say. Uh, again, more safety information in Polish. We have got a manual, which is for the SVU. This is a, let's open this up. Right, so that's an exploded diagram. So you can see there, it tells you exactly what the gun is made up of. I quite like those. Those are always useful. I really do like those exploded diagrams. And then we've got an auto electric gun manual, which is right. So that's just like a generic AK safety manual, if you like. So you're not going to learn a great deal from that. Put that away. There we have a very basic target, also put in by supplies, I'd say. And we've got our quality sheet or test sheet to say that it's in good condition and it works and it was running at 419, 420, 415, 425 and 420 when it left the supplier. So we're faced with some black foam to get rid of and there we have our goodies. So we have got charger with the European style connector. We've got a NIM type 8.4 battery, which we won't be using. Uh, we won't be using the charger. We've got some dog tags. Okay, so we've got some dog tags with a sole emblem on. I suppose in case, get those engraved in case you get killed playing airsoft. We've got a bag of BBs and we've got this curious little key ring. I do actually quite like that. Now, if you can see that, that is an SVU key ring, which is quite cool. I actually quite like that. It's fun to keep that and put it on one of my gun bags. So there's the dog tags, and we have got an SVU, uh, or should I say SVD style high cap magazine that looks exactly like a SVD magazine to me, Simon magazine, all steel. And finally, we have the replica. So let's get this out and have a look at it. Bring that out, put it one side. We have also got some jammy rod underneath and a ton of foam. So let's get on with this. Okay guys, so here we go with the, uh, the first impressions. And this thing, it's actually reasonably long. So to give you an idea about the SVU and what it is, it is basically um, the Russian's idea for making a shorter version of the SVD Dragunov. So everyone's seen the classic um, sort of sniper come DMR uh, that the Russians use with the wooden foregrip and the wooden stock. Uh, really iconic gun, but it's long, it's really long. And the Russians pretty much came up with the idea of having a DMR. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, that's a designated marksman rifle. And as a result, they decided they wanted to make 
basically a more balanced, shorter version of it, which is where the SVU came in. I believe it came in in the early 90s uh, in its first incarnation. And it's basically um, a slightly shorter barrel than the uh, SVD. It's about 100 mil shorter, but it's a ballpup design meant meaning it's in a much more compact and more balanced package, if you like. Now that doesn't mean it extends to the airsoft version because the real version hasn't got a whacking great gearbox sat in the back of it. So don't expect this to be the perfectly balanced beast that the real steel is. But it doesn't mean that that's a bad thing because being a ballpup, it means you get a decent sized barrel and you get a short package. So let's have a look at this. We have got a steel construction. Uh, this top receiver is steel. The bottom receiver is steel, or the controls are steel. This charging, fake charging handle is aluminium from what I can tell. We've got a polymer, reinforced polymer um, grip, and we've got reinforced polymer front handguard. And then slung underneath, we've got this nice folding bipod. And we'll get and have a look, more of a look at that at the moment. And it tips and tilts around so you can get a good position on it. And then underneath there, there's sort of a, a handguard as well. And that helps just lock into the actual bipod back into place. So it's actually pretty secure under there. It doesn't seem to wobble around much. And then finally, we've got this big front. Now, it's not a suppressor. It's actually a, a, a compensator, really. It, it is a form of muzzle brake. Um, it looks like a suppressor but it's actually not and then on top we've got folding sights there and there and as I said before this is a ball pup so the magazine fits in at the back here like a normal AK mag would you slot it in which doesn't give you a great deal of room between the magazine and your thumb when you're holding the actual grip but it's the same with the real one so I'm happy with that also at the front here, we've got a safety, manual safety. The safety is actually not part of the fire selector, which is here. There you go. And then at the back here, we've got a polymer style stock. So what we'll do, I'll take the camera back a little bit more so we can have a better look overall. Before we do, let's have a close up look at it. So here it is sat on its bipod. Now, one thing I don't like straight away is the bipod's undone, but somehow, when it is, the little hook that holds the bipod up actually touches the ground before the bipod does, so that's liable to get damaged or broken or something. It does fold around slightly, but I just think mm, maybe that's not so bad actually. So yeah, if you fold towards you, and it takes it out of the way, the ground. So that's worth thinking about because you don't want to be snapping that off because I can't imagine you're going to come across them every day. Now, what you've got, you've got your flip-up sights up here, your battery compartment's in there. We'll have a look at it a moment. So you can use your flip-up sights if you want and it tips from side to side. However, I don't know about you guys, but I don't think anything like this looks nearly like it should without a scope. It's just wrong. I mean, any Juggernav, any kind of... DMR style AK really should have some kind of PSO1 uh, scope attached. It has got the mounting points on the side of the gun and they look pretty sturdy, so we better fit one. So there you go. That's worth at least another few yards of accuracy. It's got to be just for how cool it looks. So yeah, I, that, that makes the gun as far as I'm concerned. If we stick a PSO1 on there, then suddenly the gun is so much better better looking. That thing still annoying me, that, that little catch down there, I don't know what I'm going to do about that, that is actually quite aggravating. But I think that makes it look 10 times cooler. Uh, we've got rid of this big expanse of nothingness on top, so yeah, that is spot on. So let's go through some of the features of this gun. We have got, I've just popped a battery in it actually, so we have got a battery up front which sits, you take down this little lever here, and the battery sits inside the front compartment. So pop this forwards, 
this comes off, springs off, and we've got a little 7.4 sat inside there. And we've got a couple of connectors on here that we can undo if we want to take it all apart. And inside there is a fuse. I'm not a big fan of fuses. So let's pop this back together. That slots into the back of there. And this is actually spring loaded. So as soon as you take that front cover off, it all sort of falls apart. And it can make it fun to put it back together when you're in a rush. Let's put this back in. Hold it together. Put this on the front. If it wants to go, come on, don't show me up now. Let's put it up like that. And clip the clip there, and it's back in. Success. So there you go. So that's sat in there. Now this, so that's your battery compartment. This front um, bipod, if you like, it's actually attached to a piece at the front here. It actually looks pretty strong, if I'm, if I'm completely honest. It actually doesn't look too weak. Um, I was worried about that snapping off. I don't think it's gonna be something you wanna use all the time, but it actually looks okay. A uh, little bit of flex in it, but nothing too terrible. I think if you're gonna give it a hard time, then one day it's gonna give up. But generally, I think for the odd bit of use, it's absolutely fine. It does rotate backwards and forwards, and you can fold it up pretty easily underneath and clip it in place. We just take that down, push this up, and clip it all in place. You see this with great ease. And once it's up, it's actually very sturdy. It doesn't want to move, it doesn't want to fall down. So if you wanted to use it all day like that, there wouldn't be any problem. We have a safety on the side here for your trigger. And here we have our fire selector. So we go down, full or semi-auto, full auto, and then back up. That is not a safety like it would be with a normal AK though. You have to use this safety because otherwise it will still fire. At the back here we have our charging handle which pulls back and it reveals the hop-up. Now the hop-up is an SVD style hop-up. A little bit like the ones, it may even be the same as the ones you see on all the other Simer SVDs and possibly even the real sword if you remember those. And they were considered to be really good hop-up and I do like these because they exert pressure directly down from the wheel onto the hop up so that is actually quite a good little touch I like the look of that and I think we can do some good with it uh, otherwise it's pretty compact it sits in your shoulder pretty tightly and um, one thing you'll notice is your thumb or your hand will catch the magazine there is very little room here so when you tuck it in you can't really like a normal gun you can get your hand tucked in behind the pistol grip you cannot do that with this you have to hold it reasonably lightly it's a very short pistol grip um, especially if you've got big hands it literally takes three fingers that's it three fingers on there and you can tuck in and you have to get used to the fact that you can't hold it like you would normally but once you do I actually don't think I've seen people complain say it's uncomfortable it's it's on un ergonomical all the rest of it and to an extent it is um, but that's how the real steel is so tough I don't mind and it's actually once you get used to it I don't think it's that bad you've got yourself a polymer reinforced cheek rest uh, to put your face against. And again, it's quite reasonably comfortable. It's not adjustable. It is set where it's set and it doesn't go anywhere else. We've got a steel trigger guard at front here with our steel trigger and typical AK release the magazine, pull it down and out it comes. Now this is a high cap. I'm not a big fan of high caps, but I have got some mid cap SVD magazines, which I will be using in here and any Simer and maybe even the real sword. I'm not sure, don't, don't quote me on that. They should work in there also. So if we put that back in, it's locked into place, there is no wobble in it. It's actually a very sturdy build. So other than sort of, sort of the bipod um, moving around, there's, it's actually a really, really sturdy gun to hold. Now the gearbox sits in the back of here. And it's a Type 3, start, it's not a Type 3 gearbox, it's a Type 3 sort of hybrid gearbox, if you like. And the reason for that is this is quite an unusual gearbox. Now, Ultimately, it could restrict you into how much you do to this gun. Uh, to get to it, you can actually push this lever down back here all the way around. The top will come off and we can see our gear gearbox inside there. And I say it's a hybrid because although it's got a captured motor, the same as a version three gearbox, it's actually got four gears in it. Uh, it's more like, I think it's similar to the um, PSG one style gearbox maybe. Uh, again, I don't know a great deal about it. 
So it's going to be a bit of a learning curve. But the Eternals don't look too bad. It's got a um, bearing spring guide in there. Um, it's got decent gears in there. So I think it could be quite an interesting uh, little build inside. I'm quite looking forward to doing something with it. We've got our plastic polymer handguard at the front and we've got quite a long barrel. Now this is the one thing with this gun is the barrel is almost too long. It's um, roughly around a 600 millimeter barrel, which is huge and way more than you really need for a DMR. But that's what it's got, so that's what we'll run with. Now it's got a standard, um, I believe 605 millimeter barrel. Um, 6.05 should I say, 6.05 or to 6.03. It's gonna have a little bit, it's not gonna be a high quality barrel, it's just gonna be a brass barrel. So one thing that maybe we're thinking about is a tight bore. So this thing, at the moment we're running it with a 7.4 LiPo battery. But as you can hear when we fire it, It's actually quite, not laboured, but quite a slow rate. Yeah, the gearbox actually, the gearbox itself sounds extremely quiet. Um, and the gears sound like they're meshing, there's no whining, no grinding, they sound really good. But the motor doesn't sound very strong now. The motor's actually sat back here. It feels quite laboured, quite lazy. And if we switch it into full auto, The rate of fire, you can tell it's quite laboured, it's quite lazy. Now, I don't want it, it's going to be locked into semi-auto, I don't want a full auto option on this because it's going to be a DMR. But, I want to get it a little bit snappier than that, it feels a bit slow to me. So we're going to have to do something about that. Now this gun, as a DMR, DMRs can be quite, quite a subject for airsoft. A lot of people say they're a waste of time, they don't do anything that a normal AEG can't do and that a sniper <laughs> or that a sniper can't outrange. So a lot of people believe DMRs are completely pointless in airsoft simply because they can't outrange normal AEGs and they get outranged by bolt action sniper rifles. So there's a general consensus that having one is pointless other than the fact that you want to look like you've got a DMR. And I'm not entirely sure as I agree with that. I think there's a place for DMRs, but for them to be any good or for them to be effective, they've got to be really, really, really well set up. So your standard gun, I know everyone says, oh, you can't, you shouldn't upgrade guns straight out of the box. You should go and play with them, all the rest of it. But in reality, it depends what you want to do with it. And I do agree with that to an extent. But if you're building a DMR, it needs to be good. It needs to be as good as you can get it. Otherwise, it's just a normal AEG that's a bit longer than normal and a bit unwieldy. So to do that, you're gonna to have to do a bit of an upgrade. And for that reason, I'm not doing a shooting test on it because I'm gonna save that for another video. I'm gonna see how good we can get it. And again, I don't wanna spend the earth on this. And also, you've gotta think about the fact that there's a lot of proprietary uh, parts in this gun with it having its four gears, it's a little bit different. So we're gonna to have to use some of the standard parts in it to try and make it good. So, with that in mind, I've already got a few bits and pieces for it. Obviously, we've got our scope, uh, which is illuminated as well. It's a really nice piece of kit, that is. And we've got our, our slightly laboured trigger response at the moment. So what we're going to do is we're going to lock this to semi. I want it to run at about 400 FPS. And obviously, like I say, locked in semi. Um, I'm probably going to stick with a high C uh, 7.4 battery in it. But I want to try and get the trigger response up. I want to get a tight ball barrel in it with a better hot rubber and see what we can do. Or maybe even an hour half, we'll have to see what we're going to do with it. But this is going to be our little DMR project. I've been talking a while now about doing a DMR project. I've looked at a few candidates, but I, obviously at the time I was looking at building a new OP4 loadout. And I thought rather than go the SVD route, which everyone does, I'm going to go the SVU route because I think this is a little bit different. And I also like the fact that it's a ballpup because I've got a bit of a soft spot for ballpup rifles. So we're going to have some fun with this and see what we can actually do with it. Get it lifting some heavy ammo 
get that trigger response a bit. <laughs> trigger response. Yeah, it's, it's a bit delayed. It takes about a week for anything to happen, it feels. So let's just try that again. Yeah, it's got a nice crack to the gearbox and the actual um, the actual piston, but the, the motor is just horrible. So what are we going to do with this thing? Well, it's funny. I, this has actually been knocking around for a while now. My girlfriend bought it me for Christmas, uh, so I actually got it last year. Now you can pick these these rifles up for around between depending on whether there's any sales on between 170 and 200 pounds. They used to be roughly about 250 mark. Uh, they've gradually come down in price as sales go on. They've been around for a while now and you can actually pick them up very cheap. I've even seen them in sales for around, like I say, around 150, probably the lowest mark. And they're actually quite nice builds. There's lots of steel. The finish is nice on them. I actually really like it. Still got to see if this bipod is going to last the tests of time. We'll have to wait and see about that, but I'm sure I could do something with it if it doesn't. Um, or we could probably remove it altogether and just run it as it is. That would not be a bad idea um, it's perfectly usable like that so we're going to carry on we're going to have a mess with this and see where we can go with it i actually really like the finish of it though i think it's a nice rifle and with the scope on it really sets it off and it makes a nice uh change from the normal dm sort of m4 based platforms for for dmrs because they're always sr25s things like that and i thought i love the rifles i think they're great but I just want to do something a little bit different, which is where our little Russian friend comes in. So what are we going to do with this? That's the question. So because I've had this knocking around for a while, I've already got a barrel. I've got a um, maple leaf. Uh, it's a 640 millimeter barrel. So it, it matches what's in here already, which is a huge barrel. Um, if not, I can always machine a little bit off the end with my lathe. But it's a maple leaf, 6.01 in a barrel we have got an shs short shaft high torque motor which you go in we have got maple leaf hop uh, rubber and knob and i've also got a simple it's an xasr mosfet from gate uh, i don't want fancy mosfets in this and the reason for that is because active braking upsets the gearbox because it's got those four gears if you get a, just a normal MOSFET with active braking, it's going to cause a little bit of possibly a few odd things to happen. So we want a very basic MOSFET uh, just to allow us to run maybe a little bit bigger battery, um, stop any uh, bounce or to allow us to get a better, well, it's protecting the trig contacts basically, stop them burning out. Um, that's more than anything. It's basically to protect the trig contacts more than anything. Uh, we're not going to get anything else out of that. It's not going to give us any other advantage other than protecting it. So it's just a little bit of a safety net, if you like. And then we're going to stick some batteries in. We're going to try and set it up. We may put, like I say, we may put an R-hop on this, this barrel. And we'll try a few different scenarios and see what kind of accuracy we can get out of it. I have heard these can be quite accurate if set up properly. So that's the bit that's uh, really uh, important is I set it up properly. And that's probably the bit where we'll fall over. But we'll give it a shot and we'll see how we get on. Okay guys, so what we're gonna do now, I'm gonna grab a mid cap, because I don't like high caps. Fortunately, I've got one right here. Uh, we're gonna chuck some BBs in it and we're gonna do a chrono test and see exactly what this beast of a gun is putting out. And then, hmm, I'm gonna have a think. Okay guys, so we have got point twos in here uh, in the mid cap and we're gonna have a, a bit of an FPS test. 407, 410, 410, 406, 409, 405, 411, 406, 405, 404. So pretty consistent actually, not bad. Um, I can live with that, that's pretty good. So we've obviously not got a problem for FPS. So what we need to do now is have a look at what we're going to do with this gun. Okay guys, so that is the SVU. Now, in all its glory. Now, I was thinking about doing an accuracy test with it outside, but it's currently pitch black, uh, gale force winds, and pouring with rain. 
So doing an accuracy test in those conditions would be a bit like, well, I was going to say it would be a bit like going on a skiing trip to Dubai, but then I realised they had an indoor skiing centre. Of course they do. But, yeah, so instead, regardless, we're not doing one because the weather is foul and we wouldn't get anything meaningful from it. I would predict with the kind of FPS we're getting, dependent on what the standard hot rubber's like, which I don't actually know, I would say you'd probably be looking at a minimum of 0.3s, 0.28, 0.3s. If it can't lift those, then obviously the hot rubber's junk and it needs something different. And that's something we're going to do anyway. I'm not going to do a great deal to the gearbox other than the motor, making sure that it's properly shimmed and everything else, but you're going to be with me every step of the way because I want to make this a little DMR project. So this isn't the last time you're going to see the SVU. If you're interested in more, please let me know in the comments below. But I'd actually like to do a lot more to this gun to make it a little bit more interesting, something that you can run as a DMR on an OP4 loadout. So guys, tell me what you want to see. Tell me what you'd like me to see me do with this particular gun, if anything. So what we'll do is when we get a, a clear patch and we can actually do an accuracy test, we'll do exactly that. We'll film it and we'll film what we do to the gun and how it compares afterwards. So by all means, stay tuned and keep a look out for that video because if you guys are interested, please let me know. I think it could be quite a good little video, a good, good little uh, series because building a DMR isn't always the most straightforward thing simply because you're trying to outrange a normal AEG. And the issue with that is there's some good AEGs out there. So if you looked at something like a, if somebody rocked up to your local skirmish and they had a Tokyo Marie NGRS with you know the full works, about 900, 1200 pounds worth of, a, of parts put into it and labor and whatever else and all the tweaks you can get for them, then those things are pushing out, they're gonna be close to sniper range. They're so, you know, they're so capable with the hop unit the TM supplies. So you've gotta make a DMR as good as you possibly can. You need it to be close and you need it to be pushing out to those real sort of sniper ranges to make the most out of it. Otherwise, it's pointless because you're restricted with a minimum engagement because of the FPS and you're not getting the distance of a sniper rifle. So it almost makes your DMR useless. Now, there are some good DMRs out there. People have built some brilliant ones. I used to have one myself until I broke it, which was an M14, and it was a cracking piece of kit, and it reached out a long way. But a standard one out of the box is not going to be any better than a normal AEG, but you're going to have a minimum engagement distance, at which point a DMR becomes completely and utterly useless. So you've got to make the most of it. And that's where what we're going to do to this comes in. Because I want to know if it is a viable option. Now, Sima at the moment are putting out some really interesting uh, SR25 variants for DMR platforms. And they are, I don't think they're pre-upgraded, but they have some reasonable internals. And it'd be interesting to see what they can actually do. But please do not be mistaken. These are not perfect DMRs out of the box. I would be very surprised if they can outrange a mildly upgraded uh, AEG out of the box. I've not tried it myself, so if somebody's going to prove me wrong, then please do. But you have to put time and effort into a DMR to make it worthwhile. So with that said, this is the end of the video. If you've enjoyed the content, please give us a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe and leave any comments below. And remember, tell me what you'd like me to see me do to this gun or anything in the future. Give me uh, the heads up to give me some idea because it's always nice to have people's suggestions and let me know what you guys like seeing. So uh, thanks for watching. Stay tuned and keep a lookout for the next video and I'll see you again soon.